So this is the channel Games Over More Coffee, welcome. And this is just going to be hosting the second part of Dev Brew videos, but it's, I think it'll, it'll probably also host live events maybe. So what I'm gonna do in here is basically just go through the um, go through the game, just linearly, linear wise, linear, gonna go through it and we're gonna uh, talk about each of the game design aspects. All right, so let's look at what we got here. So this is the very opening screen, play, how to play credits and exit. So, uh, so what I've noticed with this particular developer is that he's using the same kind of assets from other games and I, of other games that he's made. I had a little chat with him in, in his discord. Uh, he said that he, he finds it hard to make games without you know, uh, completing them in a game jam because I guess it's hard to stay motivated, which is totally understandable. And I wouldn't have known that these were reused assets, but I went and played his other games because I wanted to know what the uh, what the idea was behind some of the aesthetics. And I'm like, are you using the same mechanics and stuff? Which is kind of interesting. We'll get into that a little bit later. No problem there. I'm just just making the making a point. I don't even know what point it is, but I'm making it. I remember the point. The design here, it's very plain, but not plain as in like it needs more stylization, but the the gravity swap thing here, right here, this title looks exactly the same as all these guys, and it shouldn't. You know, it, it should look different, and the reason why it should look different is because how do we know that gravity swap isn't a, uh, isn't a th thing that we can choose? And I can see that, you know, it's, it's being animated right here. You can see it. Uh, jump up and down, um, which is also a nice little call to the mechanics. Anyway, it's just something that I'd, I'd like to see changed. Um, and then this is your opening level, so this is what it looks like. So, <laughs> so this is my first death, and the reason why that happened is because right here, um, I'm moving to the left, come down, and then the hitbox for the door, so right there. Um, I imagined that I had to get to the center of the door, right? Um, rather than touch the very edge of the door. So I kept holding left. And so of course what happened there is now I'm moving left. You can see, you can see right there, this is me. I'm moving to the left and boom, and I die. <laughs> but that happens in, what is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 frames. And this is 60 frames a second, so that's a fraction of a second that's happening there. So you can see what happened was, boom. Didn't even know what happened. So that, <laughs> I would I would lock off movement. You know, if uh, one, I would fix the hitbox. I, I say fix, I would like the hitbox to be smaller in here. Because um, it would, I think it would uh, stop people from holding a direction when they shouldn't be. I'm, I'll bet you a lot of people died right there. Like, I'm wondering why there's even spikes there at the bottom. And also, uh, I would lock off movement so that so that the player can't move while they're starting the next level. And while you're fading in, you know, because it doesn't make sense to have the player able to move while the screen is just fading in. There's no reason, unless there's like a, unless you're doing speed runs or whatever, but we're not talking about speed runs. This movement where we have the trail, that's following. Um, I played the other games that this guy had, and it seems like he's using the same movement and the same trail system for all the games. So I don't know if this is a uh, a template that he's using or something like that. I'm gonna talk about the design as if you're not making this for a game jam, because I understand that it's pretty hard to go into a game and make everything fully custom all the time. I understand that's a hard thing, but you know that's not the point of this. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna <laughs> say well that's okay because that's not what this is about. It's about game design. So I don't I don't really understand the point of the trail. I don't think it's necessary here. The movement is fine. I like actually the movement that goes from left to right, but the I, I've already talked about the gravity in the first part video, so you don't need to, I don't need to talk about that right now. Okay, so there we go here, and now we have much smaller gaps. Um, so this was interesting. Com coming down from this part, you can see that what's going on here is I'm coming down here and then I have to shift to get right there. So that's obviously the way that I'm supposed to be playing. But what I wanted to do was come down here and then shift gravity right here so I can go back up. Because you can shift gravity in the middle of falling, which I thought was a really cool mechanic, but it's so slow that there's not really a, I don't know, a way to, to make it interesting, I guess. Uh, there, there was certainly not a way that I could make it feel interesting. But the reason why I feel like that's uh, important to talk about is because this right here, these spikes right here, 
it, it makes me want to go this way and then immediately do something. Decide either to go that way or decide to go up this way. And because the game is about gravity swapping, you know, I want to do that. I want to do this part. I want to go up that way. But that's just me. That's the way I play games. So I thought that was interesting how level design sort of encouraged me to do certain things. Also, I just want to say that I really like the aesthetic in this game quite a lot. The music and the like the monochromatic look kind of reminded me of Baba Is You. And I think it's because it has that that vaguely somber tone to it. Um, I really like that in Baba Is You and I really like that in, in here too. What I thought was weird though was the the sound effects. So there's two kinds of jumps. There's this jump, and then there's this jump, and then there's this music, and there's this music. It says on the itch.io page for this that he alternates between two music tracks, and I think that's fine to alternate between music tracks, but it's weird to alternate between jump sound effects because it makes it feel like I'm doing something different. Um, or not jump sound effects, but I guess gravity swap effects, sound effects. You know, if you're not consistent with the sound effect, even though you're doing the same thing, it makes me, I don't know, feel like I'm doing something different, you know? There's a reason why I think like Mario or Sonic or all those people have the same sound effect every time that you jump, and it's because it, it needs to be consistent to let the player know that they're doing the same thing over and over. And so check this out, this is kind of interesting. If I go in fast motion here, look at the trail. Um, that is the kind of platforming that I didn't think I would be doing in here. You can see how angular that trail is. The trail is going boop, 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 boop. And this is, it's very angular, you know? Yeah, look at that. It's, it's super angular. When I'm playing this kind of platformer, um, it, like, I, it reminded me, like I said in the first video, it reminded me a lot of V, uh, the letter V six times. So this is the letter V six times, and this is, uh, you can see right here that the level is shaped in this kind of curve pattern. And the reason why, I think, is because they're expecting the player to move in that kind of fashion when they're switching gravity. And you can see that's kind of what I've been doing, you know, throughout this whole thing, because that's, that's exactly what it feels like. Uh, every time that you play, you know, you're you're going, uh, you're you're not typically moving in a straight line, um, and so that's what I expected from this game, from Gravity Swap. But of course, that's that's not what it was. The idea is that I have these tools at my disposal, and I feel like I need to use them to the best of my ability. And to the best of my ability means to, uh, you know, try to use them at the same time. So I want to do this kind of number, but it doesn't work like that. You know, you can't you can't play that way. But like I said, we talked about that in the first video. I just wanted to say that real quick. Um, I really like the death uh, animations here because it's very obvious to the player, I died. You know, it's not just something that like, just like I popped off screen or something. Like the whole thing turns red. I got this giant explosion happening right here and says, you know, game over. I'd, I'd make the game over text a little bit bigger, but uh, it's very obvious, you know, that something something bad has happened, so um, I thought that was great. That's great design. So question for you, Ellis. I'm wondering, why do you have these guys here? Um, is it because you you want the player to come over here and then go over here and do that stuff? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It doesn't... feels weird to me. I actually really liked this, this level. This level I thought was really good. Uh, so <laughs> it's a little weird that the bad guys look exactly the same as the... Uh, as the hero, right? <laughs> uh, but it was good enough for me because the hero has a tail and these guys don't, you know, I was never confused. Um, but I really like this level and the reason why is because it presents a kind of uh, nuance in the control that the player has and trying to figure out what kind of... Uh, they're trying to do problem solving here, at least I was trying to do problem solving here. So. Uh, what creates that kind of problem-solving thing, as opposed to the other levels, is because we have these guys that are moving back and forth right here. And what that does is it creates this kind of timing challenge for the player, where they know that they have to come down here and either go here, or here, or down here. And there's choices. There are choices that are not binary, you know? It's not go this way or don't. It's nuanced. There's there's many things that you can do. and. What's nice about the timing is that, you know, this part doesn't require timing, but this part, you know, requires 
uh, timing whether or not this guy is going to be here, you know, or are you going to get off this way first and then try to time your jump, um, or are you going to come down here? And it's just, I really, really like that because that gives the player the control that they're looking for, you know, and I think platformers should always be about the control that the player has. I think that's really, really nice. There's not a whole lot of complexity, you know, in this game, so there's not a whole lot of design methods that I have to talk about. Oh, there is actually one thing I wanted to talk about, which was animation. Um, I noticed that when that when I jump here or when I switch gravity, there is some animation and the animation is just, you know, the uh, the pop, the little little pop thing that happens right there. So it just goes boop, just like that. Um, and I would like to see like a more animated square. So something that I know something that a lot of people do when prototyping their game is they start out with squares and uh, the way they kind of make the square uh, animate is by squishing it when it jumps. So uh, it's one of those 12 principles of animation, uh, the stretch, stretch and squeeze and stretch, squash and stretch, that's what it's called. And you can see it in its very basic form in the game Thomas, is, Thomas Was Alone, um, where you're just playing as a rectangle or a square. They animate the rectangle and squares when they jump, and what it does is it, it makes the player understand what's happening, right? Um, this was something I actually wanted to talk about in the Rewind episode. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the game Rewind, if you remember I did an episode on this a little while ago. In this game, something that I didn't cover in the episode that I really should have was the animation of the jump. The animation of the jump here is very, very uh, static, uh, and it needs to be much more dynamic. So you can see when I'm jumping, check this out. Okay. So it was a very solid jump. Um, if we try that again, it looks like, you know, it looks like I'm just moving, I'm like levitating. And the reason why that's happening is because the jump animation isn't happening uh, that fast. And you can see right here, if I go frame by frame, it's, I'm just levitating and then I start jumping. Like, so it goes one, two, three, four. So four frames before I start to animate. Um, and then actually the animation stops again and then continues. So I think that was a bit of a bug in the animation, but uh, it happened every time that I jumped in this game. And what that does is, you know, it creates it creates a harder way to judge where it is that you're gonna go. Even Mario has this kind of uh, animation where he stretches his his arm out, you know, up here, so that you can tell he's he's jumping, he's going to jump. So I think it's important to have that kind of thing, and it would better help the player judge how it is that they're moving. Animation sets expectations for the player. So uh, I, I found a really, really good video on it. There's a link in the description. Uh, really good stuff about what uh, these these guys are talking, these game developers are talking about um, animation styles. Anyway, uh, so that is it. Um, Ellis, if you could give us some uh, feedback in the, in the comments, uh, uh, what were some of your motivations or inspirations for making this game and uh, why you chose some of the things that you did um, I like, you know, what, what you got going on here because aesthetically it's very fun. I, I like the, uh, I like the atmosphere a whole lot. Um, I like the pixelated boxes and stuff. What, what's the thought process behind your game making here and why do you only make Game Jam games? Is there a game that you want to make that's just going to be yours? Do you, do you find it hard to get motivated? Thanks for watching, you guys. Uh, bye. Peace. Did I, that wasn't even a salute. That was, I don't know what that was.